In the villages of Madagascar, the past is proudly kept alive in ceremonies like this. In Madagascar, the past is important, but so is the future, and these people must build it. Eugene Martin is the school teacher of Saramadi in the highlands of Madagascar. Eugene grew up in a village like Saramadi. He understands the ways of the people and the strength and value of their ancient beliefs. But it is his task now to teach new ways, to help the people change to a different way of life. Eugene Martin is a quite new type of teacher in Madagascar. And if this new nation, which we now call the Malagasy Republic, is to prosper, there will be many more of him. In the old days, a country youngster, if he was bright, could get an education, but not in the village. Usually, he would go to the city and one of the French lycées, and usually, he would lose contact with the life that bred him. Now, when Madagascar became an independent republic in 1960, it recognized at once that it would need a quite new kind of economy, a modern agricultural economy. And to achieve it, it would have to have a quite new kind of education for the 85% of its children that live in the countryside. This was a country that obviously needed new methods of farming, it needed dams, machinery, and clearly a generation that knew how these things worked. So the government called on the United Nations agencies and together they worked out a plan of rural education. It is a four-year course given in Malagasy as well as in French. And its main aim is to keep the young leaders on the soil that needs them. Now for a change, educated children go home and talk about things their parents understand. But there's a snag here. Now the problem is that while both generations use the same language, they find to their bewilderment that they're often talking about different things. So it's also Eugene's job to reassure the parents, to convince them that new ways, new methods don't necessarily destroy the values that the old people cherish in their old traditions. <laughs> Half of Madagascar's six million people are under 15. Because of medical advances since World War II, the island's infant survival rate is 20 times what it was in 1946. Eugene knows what these figures mean. This generation must make the land yield far more than their fathers did. They must learn technology and administration, science and commerce. These children must be prepared for jobs that did not even exist before. There is no water supply system in Saromadi yet. People have to walk a long way to find a river or a pond to wash in. The daily shower is not a matter of course. Eugene is establishing the vital, simple connection between washing and health. One of Eugene's problems is children who don't go to school. In a traditional society, everyone has his place. Wisdom is for the old, not for children. Children have always done certain jobs at home and on the farm. If the children are going to go to school, who else will do these tasks? And 
So Eugene has to persuade the parents that regular schooling is even more important than work at home. Here are two missing scholars. Eugene can't be angry because this isn't what you'd call playing hooky. They promise that they'll be in class tomorrow. Eugene asks if their mother is at home. She says, no, the children are not sick, but her husband is away and somebody had to help her with the work. She has the younger ones to care for. The children like to go to school and she's pleased with their progress. They have done all their homework. Everyone is grateful for what Eugene is doing. But Eugene says he can do little without the parents' cooperation. Unless parents encourage their children to go to school, what good is it to have a school in Tsarumadi? She promises that they will be in class tomorrow. Eugene is young, and so it's hard for older people to accept his authority. It's particularly hard when he challenges ancestral traditions. The ancestors decreed that all Mondays and certain other days are days of misfortune, Fadi days. On these days, it is forbidden to work. But surely the ancestors would want the village to prosper. Surely they would wish it good fortune in these more pressing times. So Eugene works on the forbidden days. This farmer is rebuking Eugene. Why are you working today? Don't you know the ancestors have forbidden it? Those who work on Fadi days will have no harvest. Monday is like any other day, says Eugene. If the ancestors did not wish me to work, surely they would have sent me some misfortune. But we may not work on Mondays, but my rice is growing well, and so working on Mondays must meet with their approval. No, it is forbidden. Everywhere, in every aspect of life, the influence of the ancestors is felt. Their tombs are more lavish than the homes of the living. A living person is only one link in an infinite chain of life. A family is all its members who have been before and all who are still to come. For a man to reject his ancestors is like cutting off a plant from its roots, the source of his life. Eugene knows that he must help transfer some of this loving attention from the past towards future generations. The medicine priest interprets the wishes of the ancestors, and so he is a highly respected man. He knows the ancient remedies. When they are sick, people tend to come to him rather than to the distant, impersonal hospital. What's the matter? The child has a pain in its stomach. He looks, he feels, he asks questions. Carefully, seriously, he makes his diagnosis and lays down the treatment to be followed. He prescribes certain herbs to be grated and mixed with ginger and given as a drink. A 
At certain times, a family will honor its ancestors with special ceremonies. All the village joins in traditional songs and dances. Offerings are made, and a bull is to be sacrificed to the spirits of the dead. The medicine priest leads the prayers and invokes the ancestral kings of Madagascar. I invoke Andriana Mpwanemarina, saint sanctified, who is a king born of might, sanctified, holy. I invoke his spirit wandering in our sky, amen, and his spirit which is in this world, amen. I invoke our parents, our brothers in the other world, why do we kill a bull today? In order to obtain wealth and fertility, in order to bless our efforts. Eugene Martin was trained here at this school which is being helped by agencies of the United Nations. It's a school for the new teachers of the countryside, the young men who must go out and make a quiet revolution in the villages of Madagascar. These men reach out for and use every possible way of bending tradition. They even use tradition itself in the form of the masked play. Before they go out to direct players in the villages, the students try out their talent on one another. The underfed animals are all jealous of the pig. He can eat anything, scraps from the table, things that nobody else wants. But the others must have good grass and hay, and there isn't enough for them. They are thin and hungry. The fat cow says she's just out for a walk to facilitate her digestion. Her owner grows plenty of good food. She eats as much as she wants. Again, the others lament that they are hungry, and the fat cow tells them they must get good masters like hers. 
The whole performance ends with rousing cheers. Long live the Malagasy flag. Long live Madagascar. Back in Teramadi, Eugene has organized a play for his students. The animals call on the earth to give them better food so they can grow fat. But the earth is too tired. She too is exhausted. She wants to go back to sleep. But the animals insist that the earth feed them. They are hungry. The earth tells them she's burnt by the sun and by the fires of men. She's swept away by the rain because men tear away her protecting trees to plant their crops. She's left exposed and blown away by the winds. Long live the Malagasy earth. Long live the Malagasy earth. As often as he can, Eugene gets the bibliobus or bookmobile to come to Saromadi. This traveling library service is provided by UNESCO to all the villages in the region of Saromadi. The bibliobus brings the outside world to the people, and the hope is that they will stay in touch with it and learn from it. This is an ordinary class in weights and measures. But here it is a revolution. In their old way of life, Money meant little to the rural people of Madagascar. A man's security was rooted in his sure knowledge of where he fitted in the scheme of things. The idea of amassing money was not important. It was not needed for the full life, where respect was accorded character and age. This is one of the aspects of life that Eugene knows must change, even though he regrets it. And so he's teaching these students that not only must they produce more, 
but they must know what things are worth, obtain fair value for fair measure, and realize that their village is part of the economy of the nation. They must get used to doing business and using money in ways their fathers never knew. Once a week, the farmers of Tsaramadi take their produce to market. They used to sell their crop through middlemen and often came home with only a fraction of its worth. The Malagasy government now urges farmers to sell their produce directly at the market or to take it to the government-run cooperatives where they will get a fair share of the profits. <laughs> Eugene visits one of his townspeople who have taken this advice. To encourage her, he's found out what the other sellers are asking for cabbages. But Eugene knows that old customs die hard. Many farmers are still going to dispose of their goods through middlemen and return to Tsaramadi with far less money than they should have got. The bustle and excitement of the market are not easily replaced by the supermarket. Eugene Martin has been in Tsaromadi for a year. Now, some of the older people of the town have started coming to him to ask advice, beginning to share in his plans. This man is asking, how soon will it be before we have our own clinic? Eugene says the young people are going to put on a play to raise money for it. Yes, we know our young people are doing a lot these days. Eugene says all they needed was to be told it was all right to go ahead. The play is coming along well. The young people have done it all themselves. It still looks quiet, the village of Tsarumadi, but a revolution is on the way. It is a year since I arrived. In the beginning, I was treated like a foreigner, even though I am a Malagasy. Today, everyone accepts me. Why? Because I've worked like them, with them, and have lived like them. I've had problems in agriculture because of the ancestors, problems with the elders, problems with children not coming to class. They were required to stay at home and look after the animals. I taught them to wash themselves, and I taught them hygiene. And not only the children, but the young mothers too. In fact, the whole village. As for farming, they used to cultivate crops as their ancestors did. Now the majority plant in rows. Fadi days, and there are many, special days and Mondays when people didn't work. Now I see that practically everybody has started working because people began asking themselves, why not work on Mondays? They are poor, but when I explain the economy to them, when I told them about the increase in population, 
they understood. Because I explained that there are more children and old people, and they lack manpower for work. I'm getting married next year to a public school teacher like myself, and I think we will work well together. I will stay on in Tsaromadi. I have no doubt at all about that. Il est beau, il est beau, il est beau.